Joining me today is one of the world's best amateur golfers. LSU junior Ingrid Lindblad is the winner of a school record eight collegiate titles. She most recently won LSU's first individual SEC golf championship in 31 years. Currently, she is the World Amateur Golf Rankings number two golfer, and she'll very soon be competing in the NCAA tournament. On Par with the President is a podcast that highlights LSU community members who are doing great things. A golfer who can play par golf is at the very top of the game. They're the very best of the best. And so the whole point of this podcast is to talk to extraordinary people who are affiliated with LSU. You're originally from Sweden. How did you decide to come to Baton Rouge and LSU for your collegiate, academic, and golf career? LSU was like one of the schools that I've heard about because Madeline Sogstrom went through here. And then I knew just that LSU was a good school. And it was one of those schools where the Swedish golf team coaches said that you can you can almost commit there without even without even visiting because it's so good. And then I got contacted by the assistant coach, Alexis, and I felt like we had a good conversation. And I came for a visit just a couple of weeks later and then decided I want to go here. Wow, that's great to hear. Now, anybody who's played golf knows it takes a lot of time just to play 18 holes, let alone practice for 18 holes or practice to be a perform at the level that you do. And then you have your academic activities. How do you balance all the preparation for golf and the preparation for school? I think it's a lot of, a lot about like time time management and practicing when you can practice and doing school when you can do school. So you just got to stay on top of schoolwork when you're away for tournaments and try to either do it before you go to a tournament and make or make sure that you can do it after the tournament. But you know, during the weekends I try to do both practice and schoolwork. So I usually try to like practice when I can practice and not focus so much about school about school when I actually practice or play. Understood. So when did your interest in golf begin? I started playing when I was five. And it was like me, my brothers and my cousins and my grandma played, my parents played. So she kind of took us to the golf course when we were five and my coach said, oh, it's too early. Like, you're not six years old yet, so you can't start because <laughs> you're only five. Like, we weren't allowed to practice, like, in a group when we were five. But then I started competing for a while. Like, it was just over the summer. Just played golf for fun, like, over the summers. And then when I was 12 or something, I started competing. And then I got on the national team when I was 16 or 17. So I've kind of been involved, like, with the Swedish golf team for a couple of years. So what moment did you realize that, that golf was going to be important to you and this was going to be something you were going to take seriously, not just a hobby or, you know, like a youth sport, but I'm going to take this very seriously. I think I was 14 or 15. So I did both golf and figure skate when I was younger. And then it kind of got to a point where I couldn't do both because it was just too time consuming. So when I was 14, I was like, okay, I am pretty good at golf. And then I decided I want to go to a golf high school in Sweden. So we have high schools where we just play sports. All the students at the high school, they're athletes. So I decided I wanted to go to like one of those schools. And then I kind of realized that, you know, I'm kind of good at this and I want to work harder and get better. So I've got to ask you. Yeah. Why'd you pass on figure skating? Well, <laughs> <laughs> it's a very interesting sport, but I think I learned a lot from figure skating. Like you can apply a lot of skills from figure skating to golf because it's a lot of rotational things and a lot of power in it. But it was just too time consuming. Like we practice at weird times. Understood. So as you know, getting to the green is everything. Yeah. Got to score. You're studying sports administration. You know, that's your other genius you're trying to develop other than golf. When did, when did, you, when did you pick up on that field? Like, even before I started, I knew I wanted to do something within sports. Like, if I don't play golf, I want to do something that has to do with sports. Because I've always been, I always keep up with sports at home. And, you know, I keep up with sports overall, like, not just golf. If I don't do anything, like, as a golf professional, I want to do something within sports. And then I figured, you know, sports admin, it's probably, like, a good field to study. And then I also think we learn a lot about what's going on outside of like just our tournaments. We learn like how the events are managed and 
what's going on outside of the tournament and like it's been it's it's quite interesting to study that actually so how does your experience as an athlete inform your studies in sports administration and does anything in sports administration help you think about your role as an athlete i do so this semester i'm taking one class just like a basic sports admin class and we've talked a lot about personalities and teamwork and communication and everything and I feel like that helps a lot within golf, even though we're an individual sport, like we still play on a team. So I've learned a lot of things like within those kines classes that can help me on the golf course. And some of the things I learned on the golf course, they can help me in the classroom. So I feel like they're connected. Nice. Glad to hear that. Now, you have an, another set of experiences at LSU. I mean, you're a student and, you know, you just get to live a student life. How have your experiences just in just at LSU contributed to your success as an athlete, but also just as a person? I think I've learned a lot ever since I got in here. You know, when I got here, like my English was good, but it's not as good as it is now. So I think I've learned a lot, both like within the languages and meeting new people and just four out of eight people on our team, they're international. So I feel like I've learned a lot like within the golf team and I've met a lot of people that can help me in the future as well. That's great. Now, scoring big is a double eagle, right? That's a big score. I've never made one. You never made no, one. No, I've never made a double eagle. Well, some people might say the fact that you have the most career wins in LSU history, male or female, is a double eagle, sort of speak, so to speak. So yeah. we're gonna we're gonna give you one today. <laughs> um, what do you credit your success to? How how have you been able to win so much over you know your career here at LSU? I think it's all about consistency. You can't just work on something for a week and just hoping that you'll get a result in, you know, the next week or the next month. Like, you have to be consistent. So I've been working a lot of putting lately since late fall, like over the winter break, and then just kept doing that. And I feel like it's paying off. Like You just got to be consistent with what you're doing and just – it doesn't have to be a lot of work you put in. You just got to be consistent with it and, you know, work a lot on it. So when you when you get to your practice experience, you go to putting first. I usually I usually try to do putting first, but it also it also depends because if it's really hot outside and I go in the morning, then I want to hit balls first because then it's not, you know, then you don't get too hot from hitting balls. So the Augusta National Women's Amateur is only a few years old, but it's something you've been able to compete in. Mm -hmm. Share your feelings when you're out there competing on that particular course, that historic venue. I mean, when I played Augusta this year, that was just amazing. And I didn't play very good, like, the round before. So I was kind of, instead of being the leader, I was chasing. Which, you know, it can be hard to do both. When I played at Augusta, that was just so amazing. And I was just trying to have a good time. And I talked to our Swedish golf team coach the other day. And I said, I haven't had that much fun in a round in a long time. And... I think that just speaks for it. Like it's such an amazing golf course, and just to being able to compete at that golf course is just so amazing. Well, you certainly made us proud, and I'm I'm glad I had a chance to watch a little bit of that. Now, a big part of golf, you know, it's individual sport, but there are times we get to help one another, and that's you know when you mind the flag for another person. Yeah. For you, golf and school take up a lot of time. What are the other things you do that bring you satisfaction? I do a lot of puzzles. <laughs> My my roommates can <laughs> can make sure of that. You know, like thousand pieces at least. Okay. I don't know, it just helps me relax, put your mind into something else than golf. And I can sit for three hours straight and not even realize it's been three hours. Well, I had a family full of puzzle folks. I was the outsider um in the old puzzle game in my household, but I'm excited to hear it tells me a lot about you. That takes a lot of patience, different yeah. gratification. It's just I like details, so a puzzle is like it just you have to find the right piece. So is that like the put, the green is a puzzle for you when you're putting? I mean, yeah, a little bit. You have mm -hmm. to find the right line and everything and the right speed. So Maybe there's a relationship there. So yeah. There's a hint out there for those of us trying to get our putting together. To the puzzle. <laughs> so what goals do you have for yourself? What do you hope to achieve? Well, I want to try to play professional and just, you know, just try it. And if I don't like it, then I have that. That's why I think school is important as well that if I don't like it, that I have a degree to fall back on. Just trying to have fun with golf as, as long as I can. And whenever it's not fun anymore, try to find something else to do. 
Now, you're an international student, but you're also in sports administration. So I'm going to let you have a chance right now to give a marketing pitch to other international students about why they should come to LSU. I'm going to give you a little time to marinate and think about it. Oh, I don't think I've ever done a marketing pitch before. This is a mar straight marketing <laughs> pitch right now. You know, this is your new puzzle. Let's pull it all together. What are you going to tell another student who's an international student why you should come to LSU? Well, I think LSU is a great place for international students. I felt very welcomed when I got here. I felt very taken care of, and that was one of the reasons why I chose this school. And I also think we have we already have a lot of international students, and I haven't heard anyone who's not satisfied about it. And, you know, they don't have to study sports admin. They can study whatever, and I still think they would have a great time. Very good. All right. How great that pitch, at least a par. <laughs> at least a par. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. Oh, it's that's good. a new grading scale. They're, that's above average. Yeah. Well, let's ask some fun questions. I hear you like to listen to music before you play. <laughs> yeah. So is this true? Yeah. So so what songs do you listen to before you start this off? Well, it is, start a it is three songs, and okay. it's just... I don't know, it's just been a habit of doing it. So it's usually 21 minutes before I tee off. Okay. I put on the first one and it's a song called Hon Dansa Vidare Livet, which is a Swedish song. It translates to like, she dances on in life or she keeps dancing on in life. And um, the next one is something just like this with Coldplay and the Chainsmokers. And then the last one is uh, a remix of Paris with the Chainsmokers. And they're just saying, let's show them we're better. So I think that's a, you know, it's a great last song before you tee off. Just let's show them we're better. Okay, I like that. So pre-tournament rituals and things, you we mentioned the songs. Are there other things that you do before you get started in the tournament? I usually eat an apple. It's not, it's not like a superstition or anything. It's just I eat an apple to eat something before I tee off. And if I don't have an apple, it's probably another fruit or something. I also try to have a ball marker in my pocket before I tee off and two tees. And I get uncomfortable if I don't have two tees in my pocket. Really? <laughs> yeah. What's special about two tees? It's just something you've got in the habit of? Yeah, it's just, it's been a habit. And then if you have two tees, you always know that you have an extra one if you happen to break one whenever you put it down. What tips do you have for people who want to play golf but aren't sure they want to start or maybe a little intimidated about golf? I think you need to have fun with it. Don't take it too seriously because I know a lot of people who try golf, they think it's really hard, especially like hit the balls the first few times. And I know a lot of people struggling with short game and putting and everything. So I think try to have fun with it and maybe find someone else who wants to try it with you so then you can kind of compete with them. Because we've, we've been doing a lot of competing with, within the Swedish golf team. And I think it helps a lot when you have someone to, like, not compare yourself to, but, you know, kind of compete with them and try to get better. So what's your favorite part of the game? I think putting. It's hard, but when you think about it, it's not that hard. You just got to pick a line, start the ball on the line, and hit with good speed. That's what I was thinking yesterday when we played, and I, I put a really good – you just don't have to make it very complicated. And I think a lot about it's it's speed, especially for someone who's not like on my level, like someone who's still developing, but speed is, a, is the key because if you have good speed, you're not gonna have a lot of three putts. So there's, and putting, you can always get better. You can always make more putts. You can always hit it closer to the hole and you know make more birdies. Well, is there anything else you wanna say to us? Well, I'm just wondering why the podcast is called on par instead of under par. I love that. <laughs> Maybe next year we should change the name of this. Because we want to shoot par under par. You're right. Yeah. I agree with you. You know, shooting even par is good, but shooting under par well, is even better. Well, it's 99% that. I mean, huh? we take the total population in the world and said what they normally shoot. Like, if you shoot <laughs> 72, that's pretty much you're in the 99% that. Yeah. If you're an elite golfer like you, I mean, clearly... It's not the same because you change the denominator and it wouldn't be as good. But for 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 us pedestrians, shooting the seventy two is a big deal. Yeah. For someone great like you, on oh, some courses you're happy shooting at seventy two. But I, I like your idea under par with the yeah. president. We have an opportunity to be better with this name. 
Mm-hmm. That's why you're here. We needed you on this podcast. <laughs> I love this. Just trying to make things better around Thank here. Thank you. I love it. I, <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much. It's been a real joy to, to meet you, and I wish you well in the tournament. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Take care.